Hello, my name is Verina. I come from Albania. I have lived in a small village. I have two sisters and four brothers. I come from a Muslim family where time after time my parents were speaking about God. When I was seven years old, as my mom was moving the house, I jumped from sofa on the floor and I hit my head. For 12 days, I couldn't eat, I couldn't drink, and I couldn't sleep. I remember my father was holding me in his arms, and I remember my mother was crying, praying, and whis whispering to my father that they lost me. One of those days, I said in my heart, God, if you really exist, then heal me, and I will serve you all my life. After some days, my father brought me to the hospital, and after the doctor checked, everything was fine. I just needed more time to recover myself. Day after day, I was getting better and better until I didn't feel any more pain. After some months, I remembered the promise that I did to God. I went to my neighbor, I took a Quran, I started to read Quran every day, I started to pray five times a day, I asked my grandpa because he was going to the mosque too, I asked him to teach me how to pray and to do other things. And if somebody, and if somebody from my family was sick, my father could go to one of the members of this mosque and he could pray for healing. My father brought a lock of soul that this person prayed and my father put that in the wall because we believe that this lock will protect us and will bring prosperity and blessing, a blessing in my family. As a child, I was very afraid. I went to the old woman in my village and she gave me a black necklace. And she said to me, this will keep you from the evil one. This will protect you from the evil one. I started to go to the holy places with other people. It was just an empty room, but where the people could be sit, pray and put a candle on, pray for healing, protection and blessing. I was trying to do good things. I was trying to be a nice person. But, and this continued for three, four years. But every time I was feeling empty and empty. And I didn't feel peace and I, I didn't feel joy in my heart and in my spirit. And one time, one day I was just sad. And I just sat down and I said, God, why I don't feel you? Why I feel so empty? I'm trying to do these things every day, but I, I don't feel peace, I don't feel you, I, I feel just empty inside me. After some months, as I was staying with my mom at my home, I heard kids running close to my house, and I just went outside. They were speaking with a loud voice and asked them where I'm going. And I heard Jesus movie, American people. I said, Jesus? Who is Jesus? I have never heard about Jesus. And I wanted to go after them. And my mom asked, where are you going? I said, I don't know. Somebody, Jesus has come in our village, American people also. I just want to look there, what's going on. And I went there and there were a lot of people and they were watching the movie of Jesus. As I was watching, I heard Jesus say, I'm the truth, I'm the way, I'm the truth, and I'm the life. And inside me, I felt, this is the one what we've been looking for. This word just broke my heart. At the end of the movie, as people were talking to us again, I gave my heart to Jesus. My heart said yes to Jesus. The moment that I said yes to Jesus, that moment, my spirit was filled with the joy of salvation, was filled with, with peace. I didn't feel empty anymore. I didn't do anything. I just said yes to Jesus. I didn't find Jesus. Jesus came and found me. It doesn't matter where you are. Jesus will come to find you. Will Jesus, I asked myself later, would Jesus would come in my life if I would pretend that everything that I was doing was right? 
But I got to the point of surrender because there was no life, no joy in me, no truth in me. I know a lot of people that are trying all their life, searching God in their own ways, but still not coming to the point of surrender. Because one of the hardest things it is to accept how you really feel inside you. People should hear about Jesus. God wants you and me to do that. Jesus said, I knock at the door. If you open it, I will come. God doesn't come by force in our life. Will you say yes to Jesus today? Jesus is waiting behind the door of your heart. The moment that you say yes to Jesus, the moment that you say yes to his word, the moment that you say yes to his promise, yes to his ways, yes to his will, that is the moment that God will fill your spirit with joy of salvation, with truth and life. So I went out asking, who is Jesus? And I came back with a filled spirit, with joy of salvation. I just met the day, God of eternity, God of truth, God of love, Jesus. I took a Bible from these people and I started to read the Bible every day and I started to pray every day. The Bible says, you are a new creation, a new life begins in you. The Bible says, I will give you a new heart and I will put in you a new spirit. I read in the Bible that our body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. And we should, we should put away the things that, we don't, that don't belong to God. And I started to plead my life for the things that didn't belong to Jesus, inside and outside. And we need Holy Spirit help to change us. I took a Quran and I brought my neighbor. She asked me, you don't need this anymore? You don't want to read this anymore? And I said, Jesus is the way, the truth and life. And the Bible said, there is no other name that was given people for salvation. I, I told her about this joy, this filled spirit that I had that day. The second day, I went to the old woman and I brought back the necklace. And she asked me, you are not afraid anymore? You don't need this? And I said to her, what power has this necklace to protect me from the evil one? Jesus is the power. Jesus is the life. Bible said, don't, Jesus said, don't be afraid, I am with you. And I left. After some days, my friends came and asked me to go to the holy place and I refused to go. And they, they asked me why I'm not coming anymore. And I said to them, there is no holy place. There is only holy God. Jesus is holy. We need Jesus for our healing, for our protection, and for our blessing. This empty room cannot protect you, cannot bless you, cannot heal you. I remembered my father that had put this lock in the wall and I went to take it out with my brother. And my father was angry and asked me, what are you doing? I said, Father, what is the power that this lock has over our family? This is just a lock. This lock cannot protect you, cannot bless you, cannot heal you, cannot give prosperity. I said, only Jesus can do that. I belong to Jesus. I trust in Jesus. And this family will belong to Jesus too. I took, I took the lock and I throw it away. As my family was looking at this, and they were just 
it will just end with me because God was changing my life. Family are the first persons that they will see they are changing life. Your friends, your cousin, people who know, but at the same time, they are the same persons who will be against you. The first of the thing that I started to do in my family, it was washing their feet. I read in the Bible that Jesus washed the feet of his disciples, and I started to do it also. And I remember as my, as my brother was staying online, they were asking me, why are you doing this? Who teaches you to do that? And every night I was telling them one story from the Bible and they were just laughing. They were enjoying and saying, oh, this Jesus, he, he teaches you good. Very good that you are washing our feet. But that was the only way that every night I could share one part from the Bible. I heard, I read in the Bible to pray for my family. And I, I promised to God, God, don't let me go out from this family until I win all this family for you. And it took me a long time. I prayed for my family 13 years with my brother. And the last person that accepted Jesus was my oldest sister-in-law. And it was one month before I got married. Pray for your family. Pray for your friends. Pray for your parents. Jesus has called us to pray. Jesus wants us, wants them to be saved too. And you and me can pray for them. I remember when I was 21 years old, Jesus called me to do a discipleship training program in the United States. And I stayed there nine months. There is another chapter in my life that God worked so much in my life. One week before the school would finish, we went with 11 students to another village in one church there, in a small church. And one by one, we were sharing our testimony. And after I shared my testimony, at the end of service, one woman came to me and was crying. And I asked her, why are you crying? And she said to me, 14 years ago, I was in the Bible college. And as we were in the class, we had a, a big map on the wall. And our pastor said, just put your hand and pray, but don't look what country it is. And she said, I prayed. And at the end of prayer, I saw it and it was Albania. I had no idea what's going on in Albania, she said. And she said, as you were speaking there in the front of church, Holy Spirit spoke to me. And he said, you see her? This is the one who you've been praying for. Wow, I was challenged by her faithfulness to God. And I said to her, then I am your answer prayer. So I did the calculation. Seven years old, I just started to see for God, to ask for God. Plus 14 years that she was praying and I was there, 21. God is faithful. Pray for your family, pray for your friends, pray for people. As a Christian, we have one message to tell the world, and the message is this. Jesus Christ is the Savior and the Lord, and only who trusts in Him, and what He has done for us on the cross, you will be saved. Church, we are the voice of God. God has trusted you and me to share his word to the world. I would like to close this testimony with a question. It is the same question that Jesus asked the Simon Peter. Do you love me that feed my lamb? 
Do you love me? Then take care of my ship. Do you love me? Then feed my ship. God bless you and may he use you for his glory.